Hello and welcome back to Vault, this is BioEnchanted, and today we're going to go through a fairly interesting level. It's a little annoying at times, but I quite like the idea of it taking down this enormous ship as just a small dog. But of course we're going to have a lot of combat at the level as well. And of course there's me hunting them for secrets as well, and also just trying to get rid of that explosive thing, because I don't want to get knocked into it later on and lose all my health. That's always annoying in this game, or in any game really, is when you get knocked into something explosive and lose a bunch of health, like those little canister things. That's me being a bit tactical. That's me being a bit tactical there. I really enjoy the shockwave, it's very satisfying to use. It's because everyone just goes flying, especially just as the game goes on, it just keeps getting upgraded more and more. That's something that's generally very enjoyable about this game, is the, uh, how devastating your attacks feel. And generally the levels from this point uh, get a lot more specific, like before there were a lot of areas, like the dam, where there were a bunch of levels all together, it was getting through that one place, and so it can feel kind of endless. But uh, from this point on, there's really only like one level per area, so the rest of the game will go a lot quicker, like this is the only level on the boat, for example. So it's time to actually start sinking the boat, after exploring this room of course, because of course there are collectibles to grab. I quite like the funky music here as well, it's quite enjoyable. There we go, we've unlocked another one of those little mini-game levels, the uh, ones where you're doing the little top-down shooter thingy. That one's kind of well hidden if you don't think to break the glass. There's a, I quite like that there's a lot of that in the game though, there's a lot of like uh, areas that if you just think what parts of the level would be destructible, you can find them, but if you're not really thinking in that way, you can often miss breaking that kind of thing, because you might not think to. Yeah, this part's kind of weird in a lot of ways, because you have to kind of know what you're supposed to be doing to really progress the actual uh, thing and get to the next thing to destroy. Because you, can, you may be able to guess those little red lights are things to break, like we just did with that one on the bottom left, bottom right rather. But uh, it's not obvious how to make them destructible. I think it is just about fighting enough enemies, at least in this room. I also like the little alarm going off because, oh no, the boat's having catastrophic failure right now because we've just broken part of it. It's just not quite catastrophic enough yet. I also quite like that little moment where she just kind of moves straight into the range of the ground pound as well. It's always fun when that happens. There we go, when it starts spurting like that, that means it's ready to break. Now that they're both on that side are broken, 
both the pipes rather. Now there's a turbine to destroy. And it's fairly obvious how we do that. Kind of a shame we can't just use disky's discs to blow everything up, but it's a limited enough game. It uh that was annoying. You have to get the timing just right on these turbines for the actual uh, mechanic to work properly, but I always quite enjoy this mechanic where you get into an obstacle and then let the vulnerability blow it up. It's just a very satisfying thing to do. There's a lot of enemies in this area as well. There's so many enemies to fight, and I hate the discies still. They're always most annoying. But I do quite like how, like, you can see the boat falling apart room by room. Like, you can see, like, these massive parts of the turbine that have just fallen and become little obstacles in the arena. It's a cute way to evolve the arena without losing all your footing and annoying the player by putting them in a room where it's just a flooding water room or whatever. This is like a good way of adding obstacles to the room without annoying the player. <laughs> without making it overly difficult. Something I'm kind of curious about with the character in general, at least with like, the way the show's written and everything like that, is Bolt, uh, since Bolt got the lightning bolt after being uh, picked up by Penny, because she kind of found him in a pet shop, and uh, then like, in the in the sense of the movie, it's like, not, you know, in the movie, uh, in the show within the movie, uh, Penny already had the dog, her father just souped it up. So if she'd given Bolt a different name, would the symbol on his chest have been different? Like if she called him Daisy, would he have a little flower on his side instead of the lightning bolts? Just a little thing that I sometimes end up like. That's the sort of thought I sometimes have. If they made the mistake of calling him Lassie, it would have been Tartan. <laughs> Just tartan fur, that's all it would have done visually, it would have been a mess. And finally, this one breaks. Now let's destroy the next turbine and move on. There we go. So now we have our way to the next room, so let's head over there, shall we? After taking care of this guy. Kind of a shame we can't knock him into those little, like, gaps between the things. I think you can actually fall into those, or at least get crushed by them when they're still spinning. It's kind of a shame that the enemy doesn't really get affected in any way by that. Bit of a missed opportunity, it could have been fun to knock him in there. This room's a little annoying if you don't know what you're meant to be doing. Of course you're meant to be getting to those red things, and getting that green upgrade in midair can be quite a nightmare as well, because you have to get just the right angle, and the depth perception in this room in general, as you can see, is not really your friend. <laughs> but that's the general idea here, destroy the very obvious red things to light up the lights, so that you can escape the room. The enemies are really just kind of there in this one, you don't really need to worry about them. 
Except for those two on top who can just really get in the way. And of course, these little... Uh, yeah, that looked like something I could jump on, but it wasn't. There's a lot of kind of weirdness with this particular room and how it's laid out that makes it annoying to navigate if you don't know the actual layout of it. Especially because of this, with these little, like, uh, ledges that they stop rotating, that's really irritating. Because it can be, uh, it can really throw you off a little bit if you're trying to get somewhere in particular, then you forget it's going to do that, then it starts swaying on you, so you end up falling off the back of it, and it's just like, what are you doing? Stop that, let me just get over there. Because of course, as it goes up, it also pulls away from the other ledge because of course it's getting further away. So yeah, I had to edit here a little bit just to uh, cut out all the failures that get in the screen thing, and luckily I just kind of like snapped onto the ledge there. And now we've opened the door, we get another upgrade. A really nice one. Of course, we could just ignore those enemies, which is always nice. So now that's been dealt with, it's time to move on to the last room of the level, and the most annoying one. Because this one is full of water. And has the full... It's very obvious what's going to happen in here, and it's just... Because of an aspect of this level, it's frustrating to get to this part of it. This room is more obvious with how much you're damaging the boats, but it's just not that fun to play, especially because it gives you two discies to deal with. One of them I was able to deal with with the superpower mode, but now that that's not there, we just have to wear this guy down. I just need to soften him up, make him a floppy disky. There we go. This room in general is kind of like tricky to work out the floor of as well. You can't really get up there, although it looks like from the crates that you should be able to. The crates are kind of weird in this room. They're kind of there as a red herring, really. You don't really make much use out of them. It kind of throws me off. And of course, this room, the water starts rising step by step. And so you have to kind of like stay on these little platforms. Uh, you can swim, of course, but if you try to, you'll just get zapped by those things. And trying to break these while these are infinitely spawning as well is just in a really irritating part of the level. Because you have to try and break this stuff while these things are constantly shooting at you. And you can't really get rid of them all because more of them just spawn. So it's really just kind of crowd control while you're trying to get this all cleared out and wait for the next pipe to start leaking. And it's just a really frustrating level because you'll just get shot off the pipe until you manage to bash the button hard enough to get the pipe broken and then like scatter a few of the bombs with your eye. With your eye, father. It's just, it's just not a fun fight because these drones are just so frustrating to deal with and they're so numerous as well. I have to figure out how to get up there because we actually don't have enough height from these boxes to get up there. But of course we need to find an alternate way of doing this. While trying not to die as well. This room is not my favourite. Even here we can't really like get up there. There's kind of a very specific place here that you have to get to. But of course we also have to take out the last of the uh, pipes as well. Well, so we have to start to clear out more of these bombs so we can get up there in the first place. And it's just, it's a really irritating situation to be in. I've always hated these kind of rooms with the infinite spawning. But luckily it kind of spawns you pretty much right there, so it's not really losing too much. If it spawns you at the beginning of the room, it would be unbearably annoying. But happily, it saves everything you do which really avoids you getting overly frustrated with it. 
And now we can get up here and actually start destroying this room in the boat properly. And of course, now it's filled up a bit more, we can actually get across there as well. Oh, the water's actually high enough. So those crates on the corners in this room are really just annoying. Because they are really giving you the wrong impression of what's about to happen. And that's always annoying. Because the first room just kind of teaches you, hey, these boxes get you up there. And then it just stops being true. But now we've dealt with it. I like that cutscene because it's fun seeing Calico in uh, panic mode. It's always fun seeing a villain get completely thrown off their game. Also, a bolt moving the entire crane with his teeth is amazing as well. I always love those little moments in this game. So I'll see you next time as we go through this level, which has its own irritations. But I'll see. We'll go for that. We'll discuss that then. Goodbye.